Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is February 27th and it's my weekly shop update. So I am particularly excited today and this is why this thing is all done, finally. <laughs> so I didn't actually post a shop update last week because I was trying to get this thing totally finished up and I was just really plugging away, wanting to get it done and behind me. And I'll tell you what, the devil is in the details of the details. There was a lot of like little tiny stuff I still have to take care of and it just seemed like it kept going on and on and on. But let me catch you up on some of the work that I did last week to finish this thing off. So first off I had to do all of the drawer bottoms and I did that two different ways. The first way I did with hand planes because that way is just like a lot of fun. It's a good way to practice using hand planes and it's actually pretty quick if you're only doing like a couple of drawers. This is the way I prefer to do it if I have maybe like four or less drawers. Just creating a bevel on the edges of the panel to go into the drawer boxes themselves. And it's not something that has to be super precise, so it's literally just a wasting exercise just to get the waste out of the way so that it fits into the drawer box. So I ended up doing that method for two of the drawer bottoms and then the rest did on the table saw by running them vertically against a tall auxiliary fence and beveling them that way. That made the process of beveling the other nine drawer bottoms uh, quite a bit faster. So the other big thing I did was install all of the hardware. So the poles have a backing plate and a couple of posts that connect the actual poles. So the holes for those posts get laid on all of the drawer fronts and then some holes are drilled in the drawer fronts for those posts to go through and the poles can be fully installed. The full width drawer fronts also got some keyhole discussions. I didn't install any locks into the drawers, so the keyhole escutcheons are just for show. And then the fan carved drawer fronts get a knob down at the bottom in the center. And speaking of fan carvings, uh, this guy here was one of the main things I had to work on last week to get it all ready for finish because this thing was still rough from the carving. So I spent, uh, I think I spent four hours hand sanding this to get the profile looking pretty well cleaned up, get rid of the tool marks and just get it all blended together looking you know nice and everything but you know I think that turned out quite nice so pretty happy with that so on Sunday yeah yeah Sunday Dima came over helped me carry this thing outside along with the secretary desk and we took some pictures out back I did get through editing a few of the pictures not a whole lot of them so I'll throw a few of them up here to take a look at I've been posting these on social media and I'll continue to post those as they get through the pictures um, this week. And I know a lot of people have been asking about the finials, the drop finials and how they're going to get broken off or whatever. They're actually not attached so they're just friction fit in there so anytime I need to move this thing or have it on display I can you know take them out put them in and then take them back off again so the boys don't break them but you can't break them off because they just pop right out. But at this point, the wrap up video for the high boy will be posted in the guild this week. And then after that's done, I'll start editing the full build video for you guys here on YouTube. That's going to be quite the video to edit. So it might take me a couple of weeks to get through that, but it's going to be quite an interesting video. I think being able to see this thing come all the way together in one video will be pretty interesting but overall super happy with, with just the way this thing turned out. I think it's just absolutely beautiful. I love all the little detail things that I did to kind of make it less period appropriate or specific or whatever so that's pretty cool as well and of course it's also really crazy to see both of these two pieces together because the secretary desk looked like this three years ago when I built it so you can see how much the cherry darkens over time and this thing is going to look pretty awesome even in just a couple months after the cherry oxidizes a little bit it's going to become a lot more deeper and richer and it's just going to look absolutely incredible so it's just cool to see both of those things together oh and the secretary desk is taller than the high boy by like i think three inches so there's that <laughs> so that's what's going on as far as the high boy goes. Let's head down to the shop, take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is the crib by Arvid. It's made from spruce with three Morrison tenons and made solely with hand tools. This is his first project for his first child 
and the missus wanted it painted orange. <laughs> Next this week is a dog leg dining table by Mike. Mike made this feeding table for his eight year old rescue dog. The table is made from poplar and the joiner is all hand cut mortise and tenon. Mike used a small bandsaw and coping saw to cut out the legs and shaping was done with files, rasps and sandpaper. Next this week is a coffee table by Glenn. It's made from leftover oak flooring and a few pieces of oak lumber from the big box store. Glenn wire brushed it then dyed it with Speedball India ink and shellac. Last of this week is a miniature farmhouse table and benches by Dan. Dan made this farmhouse table and benches for his daughter for Christmas for her dolls. The legs of the table are turned out of pine and the top is made of curly cherry. The chairs are made from pine and the seats are made from the same curly cherry and everything is joined together with Morse and tenons. So out here in the shop I also made some progress on the waterfall table. Uh, last week I did the butterfly or bow tie or Dutchman inlays into that thing and for those I actually used a piece of cherry from the high boy from the gooseneck moldings that had some crotch figure in it and I used little sections of crotch figure for the butterflies in there. So I think those look really cool. The crotch figure is kind of subtle but it's a little different looking than your typical straight grain bow ties. And I did a video on installing those things a couple of years ago and I'll leave a link up in the cards to that if you want to check that out. So, this is exciting. Um, High Boy is almost behind me. It'll probably be behind me next week or so. And that's feeling really great to get that kind of like off my mind. And I can move on to much more things, much more interesting things, I guess, or more, more things that are different than that. Because that's been quite the undertaking to do all of that video work on such a big project. But finally there. <laughs> so, I think it's about all I have for uh, this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment as long as I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.